Hey, welcome back to another video. And if it's not welcome back, consider hitting subscribe because it helps me out and you'll see more videos. Kaler tremolos might just be one of the most divisive pieces of musical equipment I've ever come across. People either love them or absolutely despise them. There's even social media pages dedicated to people's pure hatred of these bridges. So today I want to take a look at why people love them, why people hate them, and maybe why at least some of the hate is unjustified. To understand why Kalers have such a reputation, we need to go back and look at the original Kalers. They came out in the early to mid 80s and were very similar to that of a Floyd Rose. Except for two main differences, and these two differences were ultimately the downfall of these types of bridges. Where a Floyd Rose required the ball end of the string to be cut off, the Kaler didn't. And some attributed that to tuning instability with the Kaler. The other big difference was the nut. A Floyd Rose's locking nut replaces the original nut on a guitar. Where the Kaler's locking nut wasn't a nut at all, it was designed to go behind the original nut on a guitar. And while this is great for retrofitting, it's entirely dependent on how well the nut is cut of the original guitar. And while it may fly by today's standards of guitar manufacturing, back in the 80s guitars with well cut nuts weren't very common. And while it may be okay with a standard fixed bridge, the problems were only amplified with a trem like the Kaler. Because Kalers were very similar to a Floyd Rose, it was only natural that they were compared, and one-on-one, -on -one, the Floyd Rose just had better tuning stability. Unfortunately, this gave Kaler a reputation that they haven't been able to shake since. But Kaler went back to the drawing board, and came out with a brand new and original design based around a cam, instead of a fulcrum, like the Floyd Rose. This new design was used by players like Paul Gilbert, Jason Becker, Marty Friedman, and many others. But unfortunately, this design was still susceptible to issues with the Kaler nut. The bridge I have here today is a Kaler X-Tram. It's their budget version, and it's the equivalent to a Floyd Rose Special, or perhaps a 1000 series. However, I have to say that in my own experience, this bridge far outperforms those other bridges by a lot. When compared to a Floyd Rose, this Kaler is almost the same size. However, the routes for a Floyd Rose are substantially bigger. A Kaler is fully self-contained, the small springs in the back are mounted to the underneath of the bridge, and so the route only needs to be big enough to contain it. Where a Floyd Rose requires a recess, a route through the body, and a route in the back of the guitar to fit the much bigger springs. One of the biggest positives to a Kaler is just how smooth and effortless it is to use. You can fully dive bomb with one little finger, which I really like. Of course, the only downside to this is if you have very little self-control, it's very easy for your solos to become just Kerry King solos. And yeah, I know, says the guy who's using a Kerry King signature guitar, but still. As a side note, look how big the case is for it. For scale, I'm 6'1". This, this, it's massive. Anyway, because the Kaler is just a cam that moves and the rest of the bridge stays stationary, including the saddles, it means that the saddles can be set to any radius you want, which a Floyd Rose can't. It also means that the string spacing can be set different, which is also a really nice plus. This also makes it possible for Kaler to make their design applicable for multi-scale trams, which very few manufacturers have been able to do. This particular bridge has brass string rollers, but you can replace them with steel or Teflon rollers if you would prefer that sound. And if you don't want a tram for some reason, let's say recording or something like that, one hex screw is all you need to turn to lock the bridge into a stationary position and you've got a fixed bridge, which is great, especially compared to what you have to do with a Floyd Rose to get it to be a fixed bridge. And the absolute best part about this is with the fine tuners. With the Floyd Rose, you've got limited movement for fine tuning, where with the Kaler, you've got a lot more. So much so that you can drop tune the guitar a full step and still have maneuverability to fine tune up and down. Which is great if you've got the bridge in a fixed position and the nut is locked. <laughs> The trem does have one big downside though. 
The ball end of the string hooks into the bridge and the windings go over the cam. See where the paint is removed and you can see the brass of the cam underneath? That's where a lot of strain and stress is put on the strings, right at the windings. And because of that, if you're using the trem regularly, it's where your strings are likely to snap. But there is a solution to this. You can find and buy reinforced ball end strings, where in the factory they melt solder over the ends of the windings of the strings and it strengthens them up. But these are hard to find in shops and they're much more expensive than regular strings. So what I suggest is you do it yourself. It only takes a minute to do all six strings, melting a tiny bit of solder over the ends of the strings. It strengthens them up and I haven't had a string break doing that since I started. Tailors can do just about any tricks that a floored rose can do. And I'm going to play some examples, but just don't pay too much attention to the tone here. This guitar has unbranded active pickups and they're a little bit more compressed than I'd be normally used to. So just pay attention to what the trem is doing. <laughs> Now the only difference that I can tell and other people talk about as well is flutters. Where on a Floyd Rose it's very easy to pull up the bar let go and it flutters. The Kaler is a little bit harder to get that same effect and when you do it's a little bit more subdued. So if fluttering is a big part of what your play style is maybe a Kaler isn't the best for you. But then again I have heard that if you install heavier gauge springs in the back of the Kaler then you can do flutters just as easily on a Floyd Rose. However, I have heard that that does take away from Kaler's ease of use. It makes it slightly harder to push down the bar, but maybe you'd like that. Overall, I think if a Kaler is paired with a Floyd Rose nut, or even just a properly lubricated and well-cut nut, maybe with some locking tuners, it's a fantastic trim. I think just like a Floyd Rose, it comes down to how good the setup is. And it's unfortunate the Kalers have got such a bad reputation because how they haven't been set up well. They're certainly not perfect, but I think they're far better than what they're given credit for. In my personal opinion, I much prefer a Kaler to a Floyd Rose. I think it's a real shame that due to their reputation, they're not used commonly on production guitars. And because there isn't a huge demand for them being made, the bridges themselves are more expensive to get because there's just not a lot of them being made. It's overall, very disappointing if you are like me and you really like these tremolos. Anyway, thanks for watching, like the video, and let me know in the comments, have you tried a Kaler? Did you like it? Did you absolutely hate it? Or has this video maybe made you want to try a Kaler? Or run in the opposite direction? Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.